Okay, so we are in the process of filling, leak checking, and then pressure leak checking this loop. Um, and I'll explain what all that means in a minute here. So what I've got is I've got some distilled water. That or deionized water should work. You want to get yourself a bunch of it because uh, it's 88 cents a gallon, so grab yourself a gallon. Um, don't use spring water, don't use tap water. Chlorine is not good for the metals inside of this loop and will cause corrosion to happen quicker. And then I wrote on here, don't drink it. I've got a second power supply because I've got a whole bunch of them just sitting there. And uh, this has one of your jumpers on there. We used to have to do this with a paper clip back in the day. And now almost every EVGA, sometimes even Corsair power supplies, comes with one of these. And all that does is it jumps two of the pins and tells the power supply to kick on and do a self-test. And it'll stay on as long as it's plugged in. The switch is on and it's plugged into the wall on, on the island here. And uh, it'll be on and then I've got the Molex running straight to the pump. So we're powering only the pump, nothing on the computer. I'm not even jumping the power supply on the computer. Which you would do the same way and not have the ATX and the CPU and the video cards plugged in essentially and let it... Uh, just run. Now what's happening here is I've filled this up and uh, what you do is you fill it up to about where it is now. You'll jump start the pump by hitting the switch on the power supply. You let the pump prime and you'll hear it and you'll see water start to appear in your blocks and you see it getting all swishy swashy over there and then it'll start to hit the radiators and all that good stuff. If you're not sure if the pump's running, you know, stick your finger on it and you'll feel a small vibration. Never ever run these pumps dry. Make sure that Everything on the intake and the exhaust is free and full of uh, liquid at any time the pump is spinning. The bearing is lubricated by the water and tolerances will go out of spec if there's no water and it'll chew itself up. And even a, even a few seconds can uh, shorten the lifespan on these pumps. So we always run them wet. Um, always. As the pump turns on for the first time, it's going to suck down a lot of this water. As it's priming all the way through here, the blocks are filling up, the CPU blocks filling up, then the radiator number one fills up, then radiator 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 number two fills up, and then the, it returns to here. And you see a whole bunch of air coming out of here early on. Um, when the water hits right about here or so, I went, I go ahead and shut it off, and then I'll fill it up again carefully until it's about at the same level and then I'll do the same thing until the system somewhat stabilizes and you'll see there's still bubbles coming out and you have to move this around a little bit shaking this around will cause pub uh, will cause bubbles to you know get out of their stuck spot and come loose and be able to travel the way up displacing it with water so let me turn the pump off real quick see some more bubbles came out and then we'll turn the pump back on and I'm gonna do this a few times and as the pump speeds up You'll see more and more bubbles come out right there. And you gotta do this a lot. And you have to move this case around, tilt it a little bit, not too much. You wanna try to get as much of this air out as you can in the first 24 hours. That's how long I'm gonna run this thing, um, watching the water level. Now I've put napkins under here in case there is a leak. I can see it easier. It's not really to catch anything. If there's a leak in here, we got a big problem. Luckily, this is just distilled water with a little bit of additive. Uh, this is this Primo Chill stuff, which is great because it's not conductive and it conditions the loop and stops algae from growing. So it's got some silver and copper and all this kind of stuff in here, I think. Now, what you must understand is that because the liquid starts off non conductive, as soon as you add anything to it, even after it just runs for a little bit, it's going to become conductive. The only reason you need it to be non conductive is early on for leak testing. So if it does leak, you're not screwing up your components with anything of that nature, but it will eventually become conductive just by being around metals and picking up ions. So even that deionized water, distilled water, doesn't matter, all these liquids will become essentially ionized. And this could turn the system into a, almost a battery. If you have many different metals in here, such as aluminum and copper, you're gonna trade electrons between them and it's, cause, it's gonna cause one or both of them to corrode and ultimately probably fail. Um, so you wanna stay with copper everything as much as you can and just understand that the liquid will become conductive after a short time of just running in here. Now here's a couple of things you need to know. Water that's slightly conductive will microscopically cool better than non-conductive because it's able to trade much quicker and bond with the surface a little bit better uh, in, in liquid tensions and all that inside the block. So that's just a natural thing that just happens and I wouldn't worry about that too hard. 
um, too much. And that, that's Django Unchained I'm watching over there. Sorry for the noise. But right, so um, that's pretty much the gist of it. So you want a leak test without the system on for at least a day when something is this expensive. And I'll do another video on how to actually pressure test it. Once everything stabilizes, I'm going to add pressure to the system with the pump off. And just to see where we are as far as any kind of leaks will be exposed at that point. Okay? So, that's pretty much how that goes. And uh, I'll catch you then.